Hey, it's Friday, and I'm going back to doing a Friday show where I talk about the smaller gaming news that I didn't mention in a dedicated video earlier in the week. If you don't like a story that you're listening to, you don't have to click back. Just go ahead and check out the timestamps down below and find stories you care about but let's get into it. So it looks like there's going to be a brand new Legend of Zelda movie coming out. And you'll never believe who's making it. Nintendo is partnering with Sony to get this done. Now, I, most video game movies suck. I think we can agree. But in the last couple of years, we've had some half-decent ones. Some were actually pretty good. So I do think there's a really good chance the Legend of Zelda movie could do very well if they treat it perfectly. And I'll say... Zelda is a story as old as time. Uh, the story has been retold over and over again. And as long as you have the, the Triforce of components there, as long as you've got the princess, as long as you've got Link, as long as you've got Ganon, you've got a story to tell. And unlike other video game movies where we want it to stick exactly to the video game to the letter, you can get creative with this formula. You can do whatever you want to with it. You can change it up a little bit. Sure, they could pick one of the games and stick directly to it, like maybe Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time. I would like that. But if they told their own brand new version of it in a live action film, I think that could still be very, very good. First off, they said that Miyamoto was working on this film and has been for several years. And obviously he's the creator of, you know, Mario, Legend of Zelda. He's written a lot of these Zelda stories. So if they let him, you know, at least consult on this film, it should be a good one. Then you've got uh, this producer by the name of Avi Aridson. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. You look at this guy's movie uh, history. There's some stinkers on here. Daredevil, Hulk, uh, Spider-Man 3. Some movies that I didn't enjoy. But there's also incredible movies on here like Iron Man. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Uh, he did work on Morbius. But, you know, they can't always be winners. But if you look at this list, I mean, he knows nerd shit. He knows nerd stuff fairly well and if Miyamoto's got him by the the reins I think there's a chance they'll make a good movie together I mean I remain hopeful uh the Super Mario movie was really good I've seen it three times twice on Peacock and and once in the theaters I think they could get this right I would prefer if we didn't cast Chris Pratt as Link or Chris Pratt as Ganon if we, I would prefer a Chris Prattless movie if we can help it and if you have to cast Chris Pratt spice it up Make him Zelda. Just go ahead and tank the whole thing so I know not to watch it. Before I get into the next story, let me remind you that I am sponsored by MetaPCs. If you're looking for a brand new laptop, brand new desktop, or you want to custom build your own, you want something ready to ship, MetaPCs has you covered. I'm using a MetaPC to record this video right now. And hey, if you already have a PC, but you need a display, peripheral, streaming gear, software, whatever, they've got that available too. And the reason I recommend MetaPCs is because they've got decades of experience, they've built thousands of machines, and they've got incredible quality service. So go to MetaPCs.com or use the link in the description box below, and if you use code BOOGIE, you'll save 5% off of your purchase price, and you'll be supporting me at the same time. Speaking of video game movies, uh, I did watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and I don't feel like making a, a full dedicated video talking about it, but I will say that I enjoyed the movie. Uh, quite a bit. Now, keep in mind, I do have a subscription to Peacocks so that I can watch, you know, The Office. So we streamed it on Peacock for basically free, and me and my friends got together and watched the movie. And I'm not crazy about Five Nights at Freddy's. I played through several of the games, most recently Security Breach, you know, the 3D one where you run around the pizza plex. I think it's called Security Breach. I know some of the lore, and I enjoy the lore. My girlfriend, my friends know way more of the lore, and they enjoyed the movie at least as much as I did. And as far as video game movies go, this one's very competent. Now, I watched it for free, and it's definitely worth the free price, but a lot of people showed up to the movie theater and paid movie theater prices to watch this. It cost $25 million to create this film. They earned back $207 million. So there's definitely going to be sequels, and I'm excited to see them because there's a lot of stuff you can do with this particular franchise. I did feel like the movie could have been bloodier, gorier, scarier, more jump scares. I feel like, you know, the audience that would watch this could handle uh, some PG-13 stuff that they did not fully include. And there's like an exposition dump in the, the beginning of the third chapter, the third act that I just kind of really didn't like. But most of the people I know enjoyed this film. And if you skipped out on it, you probably will enjoy it. If you know FNAF lore, you'll probably enjoy it. And if you don't know the lore... 
uh, you know, scary animatronic goes boo. It'll be a fun time for you. So give it a shot. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am obviously into cape stuff, right? But I'm also a Mortal Kombat fan, so this is like a perfect combination. Keep in mind when I talk about Mortal Kombat 1, I did get a review copy. So you'll need to know that going into it. I think Mortal Kombat 1 is good. It's not as good as the last game, but it plays well. It's fine. All the extra polish bells and whistles is not exactly there, but there's enough there to where this is a very competent game. And they are doing seasonal content and constant updates. And all those updates are going to be free, except, you know, the combat packs and all of the DLC that you can buy. That's a whole other thing. However, if I were to say Mortal Kombat's a, a good game and you should play it, you should, especially if you're a fan of the TV show Invincible. And if you've not watched Invincible, you absolutely should if you're into cape stuff. I mean, it turns it on its head. It's like a completely different thing. If you're tired of what Marvel's doing, you're going to love Invincible, and they just started season two. Omni-Man is from that show, and he is the first guest character coming in from uh, Combat Pack 1. And, I mean, they got it perfect. They got the voice actor, J.K. Simmons, to do the voices. The voice lines are perfect. The fatalities, the brutalities, his fighting style. Now, I will say I'm not a, a, a like a fighting game pro. I'm really bad at these games. I just like to play with them to see the goofy fatalities and the goofy brutalities and listen to the goofy stories and watch the goofy voice acting and then just mess around with the game doing the seasonal content till I get bored with it. But I will say Omni-Man is probably busted I don't know what the pro circuit is saying about him, but he's really powerful. I expect him to get nursed, but he's just a joy to play. He plays a little bit different from everybody else, and it feels a little bit different. And I, if this is what they're doing with their guest characters this time around, I would really welcome it. I'm also a Smash fan, a casual Smash fan. And in the last casual, uh, in the last Smash game, they did do a lot of like very unique characters that played very weirdly. I, I, maybe that's what they're doing with some of these guest characters, and if they are, I'm all for it, because I'm a casual, but anyway, check out some of the gameplay for Omni-Man, check out Invincible, and congratulations, Ed Boone, uh, I know you watch my videos every once in a while, so, uh, what a great job you did with Omni-Man, I hope you're able to do it with the other characters, specifically, Peacemaker from Suicide Squad is coming in, I'm super excited for that, gotta get it right, Hope it's John Cena. I hope you had John Cena in the voice acting booth for that one. Super Mario Wonder came out, and it is wonderful. You know, if you haven't watched somebody play through this game, I recommend Zach Scott's games. His, his gameplay is the one I'm featuring right here, right now. Uh, you should watch somebody play through this game. But if you have a Switch, and if you're interested in Mario titles, I recommend you play it for yourself. Because it is absolutely wonderful. And let me explain why. Obviously, the critics loved it. Obviously, the players loved it. Everybody who's touched this game loves it. And 2D Mario games are generally very boring. They're not very innovative. The 3D Mario games, that's where the innovation is at. Mario Odyssey, Mario Galaxy. There's so much weird stuff they can do with that formula. The 2D Mario games have always been just very traditional. This is everything but that. I feel like they were heavily inspired by the Rayman series, uh, especially when it comes to the musical levels. I feel like they were heavily inspired by some of the community levels you saw on Mario Maker, and they took those concepts and they turned them up to 11 and then just continued to innovate from there. And every level has weird little secrets and weird little variations, and the Wonder Seeds just... I was just happy the entire time I was playing this game. It just made me feel good inside. Parts of the games are not very challenging. Other parts are very challenging. You can find your own challenge levels. You can set your own challenge levels by choosing multiplayer, by choosing badges. However you want to do it, the game is there to be customized and play the way you want to play it. And it's worth playing it just to see all of the crazy stuff they managed to do. This has me excited about 2D Mario games again. It, announce another one. Next year, and I'll buy it. Announce a new one every year. Make a Mario Wonder Maker, and I will lose my absolute mind. I felt nothing but pure joy while I was playing this game. Well, a little bit of frustration at some of the higher-end levels. I won't lie. But I was just so happy to be caught up in a 2D Mario game again. It felt like Young Boogie 
in the 80s, setting down, playing Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo, on his black and white TV all over again. And I'll let me plug myself here a little bit too. I am live streaming my second playthrough of this game over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash boogie2988. If you want to see me enjoy it, uh, I'm doing the non-multiplayer version of it over there, so I'll probably get a little frustrated too. But come check it out, and you can understand why this game is absolutely wonderful. And if you have the opportunity to play it, I think you should. And then finally, the Golden Joystick Awards are out. And whereas I prefer the Game Awards to be, you know, the one that matters to me, uh, I do like to take a look at the winners that they gave, uh, you know, at the Golden Joysticks. And when we take a look at this list, you got Best Storytelling, Best Visual Design, Overall Game of the Year, Best PC Game, Best Game Community, all going to Baldur's Gate 3. I hate that I couldn't get into it. I really do want to play through that game. I'm going to still try to. But what I did play, I live streamed a good chunk of it, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom got Nintendo Game of the Year. That seemed like a no-brainer. Uh, Xbox Game of the Year was Starfield. Makes sense because you got it for basically, quote, free, end quote, if you have Game Pass. PlayStation Game of the Year, Resident Evil 4. Now, I think, obviously, this should have been Spider-Man 2, but Spider-Man 2 came out too late. I think, to qualify. But, most wanted game, looking forward to the next year, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and obviously, everybody's looking forward to that. There's some other bangers on here, too. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1, I'm glad to see them get a little bit of love. No Man's Sky got the Still Playing Award, because that game continues to be fantastic. Best streaming game, Valorant, a game that I just couldn't get into, to save my life. Best gaming hardware was PSVR 2, but wasn't that like the only gaming hardware to come out this year? Critics' Choice Award is Alan Wake 2. Nah, I didn't play Alan Wake 1. I don't even know what he woke up from. So I can't really speak too much about these games, but this is a good indicator of some of the games you might have missed and a good indicator of what we might see at the Game Awards in December. So there you go. There's some of the gaming and movie and nerd stuff that I've missed. If you enjoy these roundups, you got to do me a favor. You got to let me know by dropping that like and leaving that positive comment to encourage me to do this moving forward. And on top of that, if you really want to go above and beyond, I got all kinds of links down in the doobly-doo and in the comment section. Go check those out. I've got sponsors. I've got merch. I've got all kinds of cool stuff that you might enjoy. But until next time, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon.